So yeah, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me today at this uh, LibrePlanet conference, the day two. I'm excited to be here, and I'm excited to uh, tell you something about reuse. So reuse provides simple steps to declare your copyright and licenses. But first of all, let me set roughly the frame of this whole talk. So here at LibrePlanet, I assume we are all aware of the benefits of free software. So I do not have to convince you about those. And no matter whether we are developers or not, we all care about all four freedoms of free software. And one of these four freedoms is the freedom to share software. But um, if you're a developer, you might decide, and many people decide, to share their software only under certain conditions. And thanks to free software, we can set different conditions. So we do this by choosing a free software license. They have different types. Uh, different settings, but yes, we clarify these conditions for use and reuse. Now, of course, if you're a developer, but perhaps also if you're a user, um, you want to make sure that users and especially reusers, so people that incorporate code into their own software, are aware of those licenses. So, um, but also, of course, about you as a copyright holder, for instance. So, in an ideal world, finding this license and copyright information should be that simple. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Let's be honest. It's often very hard and, and this uncertainty around this whole finding licensing and copyright information about a project or software often leads to confusion and to ignorance after all. Of course, we do not want to have this. So reuse could be understood as a solution to communicate this information a little bit better. But before we dive directly into these issues. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Max Mehl. I work for the Free Software Foundation Europe uh, as a program manager. Yes, and I'm really happy that we can be here today and have these uh, 45 minutes. So, yes. So what are these typical issues with licensing, especially free software licensing? So it's often the case that people lack information about the license and copyright of their own code or of third-party code. What do I mean by that? A third-party code is a little bit easier. Say you want to reuse someone else's code, which is completely fine if the conditions are, are met. You should be aware of their licensing choice, whether it's compatible, whether it's actually free software. And often this is quite hard to find out, but it could also be your own code, right? We all remember if you someone coded a script or something else five years ago, never touched it since then, since then you're not really sure like what was, uh, is this all my own code or is it perhaps someone else's and which license did I pick? Did I ever give it to someone else? And if so, under which condition? So yeah, we have this missing information. Then if you reuse code, uh, sorry, share code with others, those reusers may overlook your chosen licenses, either for all files, because they do not have any clue about your licensing choice, or for individual files. Well, um, it could be that you have, for instance, images or blob files or configuration files or something else that is under a different license than your main chosen license, if there's any. Which brings us to the next issue, how to deal with multiple licenses. I mean, you may be aware of some guidelines, how to set one license for a repository, but what if you have two, three, four, or even more? That's quite realistic. Then we have license ambiguity. I mean, we are all aware of the GPL license, but hey, there's not only one license, GPL license. There are so many different variants, versions, expression, um, exceptions, and so on. So there's a lot of ambiguity in this area. And now think of if you have a bigger project, like a bigger community, you also want to have your contributors being aware of how you do licensing. Like what's the license? How do you declare it to reusers and users? So you give, need to give them some sort of training and need to check that. And like, there are so many issues. I, like these have been around for ages. So in the meantime, there have been developed so many different best practices that are sometimes even conflicting. So this is the set of issues that we've seen when we, in 2017, 
as the FSFE thought about how can we do something about this? How can we make licensing and copyright easier for everyone? And by everyone, I mean not only humans, but also machines. There are so many cool tools that help you with licensing and that are used at larger reusers or somewhere else. So we also want to make it easier for machines, but of course also for humans. So that's, that, these are a lot of challenges in there, right? And what we came up with are, is reuse basically and the principles of reuse. So this is a short summary of what we thought back then would be great to have. So a great goal or one of the big goals is that we want to make it easy to find copyright and licensing information for every single file in a repository. And by every single file, I really mean that. No matter if it, whether it's a 50,000 lines of code source code file or whether it's an image or whether it's a configuration file, it should be easy to find out the licensing and copyright for this file. But we also want to avoid silos. So silos, we often see that in the corporate, corporate area where you have some databases or some cloud services where there's information stored about different software projects. But this is not really good because this might also be conflicting and you have to find it somewhere. So in the, in the ideal world, this information about copyright and licensing would be stored directly inside of the repository. And not in a version control system, which might be migrated or break, broken or something else, but really as plain text, ideally. We want to have this information readable by humans and machines. I told you that. And we want to be compatible with other initiatives, with other best practices as far as possible. So in the end, we do not want to reinvent the wheel. But the most important point for me was back then to make licensing easy and fun for developers. Easy and fun again, yeah, if it was ever fun, <laughs> let's be honest, but more easy, more fun for developers, no matter the project size. So whether it's your 10 files hobbyist project, or whether it's a 100,000 files project like the Linux kernel or something else, we use should be applicable for all of these projects. And so basically, since it should be simple, we boiled it down to three steps. And these may sound a little bit like naive uh, to you, but you will see that these three steps actually suffice to reach all these or to uh, suit all these principles. So the first point is, and the first step is to choose and provide licenses. That may sound easy, but it's a really important choice. You will know that you should choose a license that matches your expectations, so your conditions. And there are a lot of free software licenses and you should make a really knowledgeable, knowledgeable choice. And as soon as you made, as you chose the license or even the licenses, if you want to apply multiple licenses, you have to provide them. And we will see later how to do this. The second step is probably the most complicated and the work intensive which is to add copyright and licensing information to each file in the repository. And the third step again is quite simple. You are asked to confirm reuse compliance. Now we'll look a little bit into these three steps. So the first step again is to choose and provide licenses. So pick a license or multiple licenses. So as I said, it could well be that you have for your source code, you have, um, a GPL version three license, but for the images that you created, you might have, have some Creative Commons license. That's completely fine. And you've got to save these license texts inside of a licenses directory. So this licenses directory is a novelty that Reuse introduced actually, because as I said before, what to do if you have multiple licenses? There are different techniques how to do that. Like people traditionally, have, if they only had one license, they had a license text file at the root of their um, repository or copying file. But yeah, this got quite complex if you had multiple licenses. So our solution is to provide a licenses directory where every license text file is stored in. And these, to make it even easier, are named after their SPDX license identifier. So 
short excursus. What is SPDX? SPDX is nowadays a project by the Linux Foundation, but they started with something really simple. They wanted to provide a unique identifier for every free software license. Because, as I said, there are many different variants, for instance, of the GPL license. GPL2, GPL3, and then the different things. Do you only apply it to, uh, like, only, do you only say, well, this is um, GPL2 and not any later version, or do you say it? GPL2 and any later version? Do you also have some exceptions? Well, this is so complex and this created so much confusion because, well, people just wrote it somewhat, some in some way into their readme files or at the commentators in their source code files. And so SPDX create, um, provides these unique identifiers for every, li uh, for every license that is out there. So, in this example, we say, well, we choose here the GPL 3.0 or any later version. And so you store the license text inside of the licenses directory, as you see below. Then the second step is the most interesting one. You're asked to add information about copyright and licensing as a comment in the file header. So most source code, code uh, formats support comments. And for the license, we say that you should use the SPDX license identifier tag. So this is a string how tools, but also humans can find out what, which SPDX license identifier actually applies. So in the example below, we see that here, we say this example file has the GPL 3.0 or later license. For copyright, there are many variants we suggest to use the SPDX file copyright text. That's a tag also, as you see by the SPDX project. Um, we use this because it's quite simple to find for tools, but also for machines. But of course, you can also stick to more traditional copyright lines, like we see also in the last line. So with a copyright symbol or some other variants. So we reuse doesn't mandate anything in this regard. You can use any, but yeah. So in this example, this file as a comment header defines that the file is under GPL 3.0 and has two copyright holders. But now what to do if you have files that do not support comment headers or comments at all, like a JSON file or a picture or something else? We have two alternatives. I would say the most preferred alternative is a separate .license file. So in this example below, we have an image with the name cat.jpg. And now you're asked to create a text file called cat.jpg.license. So this is plain text file where you add the same information as we've seen before. This time, this time it's, it's a different license and a different copyright holder, but otherwise it's fine. But now there may be cases where you have a lot of binary files. Like let's say, a directory full of icons for your application. 500 icon files that are binary and cannot be commented. Of course, now the first alternative would mandate you to create 500 additional files, like for every single file, a separate .license file. Of course, that may not be the best solution. Now we offer a depth 5 file for bug information. That five is a format introduced by the Debian project that we we used here, and so there's one right now one file called dep five inside of a specified directory where you can define directories and multiple directories with different patterns to um, communicate copyright and licensing for these files. So in the example below, we say every single file in the img images directory should be under the copyright holder, create artist, and the license CC BY 4.0. It's a little bit a different syntax than the rest of reuse. We are currently planning to make that a little bit more reuse style and more flexible, but I will perhaps come to that later. So with this, we can make sure, we, or we have all options to define copyright and license for every single file in a repository. And as I said, also configuration files and something else. because because we want to have this un unambiguous and easy to find. And the last step is really simple. You're 
invited to install, for instance, the reuse helper tool to check for missing information. So it's a quite lightweight uh, Python script, of course, free software. You can check out, check it out and also contribute. And the simplest command is to run reuse lint and it will call through the whole repository, tries to find copyright and licensing information according to the reuse best practices. And in this example, it tells us, well, everything is fine. You're compliant with the specification. Really good. So to wrap this all up, what are the real specialities? What is new or what is different? So as I said, the first novelty is that we store licensed text files in the licenses directory. We thought about this because people complained they wanted to use the, or continue with a more traditional license or copying file, only one file, or writing this in the readme file. Well, after a few ex experiments and also other specifications that did it differently, we said, well, the easiest really is to have this separate directory. It's unambiguous, it's easy to find for machines and for humans, and well, it just makes sense to store this in a separate directory. A second thing is that, I say it again, we want to have information about copyright and licensing for every single file. And ideally as a commentator, because that would be as close to the f actual file as possible, but also with alternatives. So that may sound a little bit, um, I would say really, really strong or a little bit pedantic, but it, it makes sense because well, otherwise authors just define for themselves, well, for this file, I don't need a, a copyright or a license, but perhaps there should be a license for this. And people want to find out what licenses apply to a repository. So that's why we are really strict here. And also these alternatives for uncommentable files, this is also a novelty. And I would say they make sense. And yes, again, we have this unambiguous copyright and licensing information. That's, I would say, the, is the biggest plus of, of reuse. Over the course of the years, as I said to you, we started in 2017 with this project. We created different components, I would say. So nowadays I would say we have four components roughly. So the first and foremost component is the best practices. So we wrote reuse as a specification, quite formal specification. This is important because we want that community projects, but also industry actors can integrate reuse into their policies and to have a really formal specification for this. But of course, not everyone loves to read like quite dry specifications. Therefore, we created a tutorial and an FAQ section. So this provides a really low entry barrier. We explain, reuse from scratch with an example repository. And the FAQ does not only cover reuse questions, but also more general licensing and copyright questions uh, that we are, have been asked for so many times. And then uh, we have the reuse helper tool, which I quickly introduced already. And the helper tool started with having this lint command, just trying to figure out whether the reuse specification is met in the repository. But nowadays it also supports developers in making their projects reuse compliant. So automatically or semi automatically adding this licensing and copyright information to headers and these alternatives, but also many other things generating a bill of materials and so on. And to show you a little bit more about this and how quick making a repository reuse compliant is by the help of the reuse helper tool, I would just try to show you a demo. Let's hope for the demo gods to be friendly to me today. That sounds good. Okay, I hope you see my terminal now. So, um, what we do here is to go through the example repository that we've set up. So you can also follow this by following the tutorial, downloading the um, or cloning the real, uh, the, the example repository. Um, but yeah, we just quickly go through it. So what's inside here? Let's see what files we have. So this is really a simple thing. We have um, a source code file at the very bottom, C file. We have a readme file, a make file. We have two binary files, cat and dog, and a git ignore file. So in total, six files, two directories. So 
let's start with uh, finding out what uh, the reuse helper tool thinks about this repository. Yeah, well, that's not so positive. Uh, let's start from the top. It tells us that these six files do not have any copyright and licensing information. And so, yeah, it's not compliant, obviously, and no license got detected. But we will change that in a matter of a few commands. So we were gonna use the reuse add header command from the tool. So we add here to the files the copyright for Jane Doe and with a GPL 3.0 or later license and for three files, for the C file, for the make file and for the readme file. Okay. And it tells us, yeah, successfully changed the header of the files. So let's find out what happened in this repository by these three commands. So we see here the diff for the three files. And we see that for every single, or for all three files, we have this information about Jane Doe as copyright holder and um, the GPL 3.0 or later license in the respective uh, comment type of the file type. Yeah, so that seemed to have worked. Now we add the information about uh, copyright and licensing, in this case for create artist and with a CC by 4.0 license to all files in the image uh, directory. So note here, we use the asterisk. That also seemed to have worked. So we see here that it got created a cat.jpg.license file and the same for doc. So let's look what we have here. Here we have two new files. And let's see the license and copyright information for the cat image. Yes, so as you can see, it's plain text file. You have the information as you already seen it a number of times before about copyright and licensing. So now we are going to add this information um, that the copyright holder of the git ignore file is again Jane Doe, but now with a CC zero license because we say, well, we do not really care about copyright of this file or for some different reasons. We say this file should have a different license. And yeah, it changed the header. Now, what's the situation that reuse sees in this repository? Do you think it's already reuse compliant? Let's start from the top again. We see here missing licenses. So we have successfully found three different licenses and different files. But yeah, the license text files are missing. So we didn't download them yet. Therefore, yeah. But now we could of course go to the uh, knu.org or fsf.org website, to the Creative Commons website, and then again, yeah, try to find the license text files. But we could also just run the reuse command. We use download the dash dash all. So we could also download individual licenses, but here we say, well, download every single license that you found in the repository. And since I have internet here, it downloaded the information. And we are going to run reuse lint again. What do you think? Yes, now we are completely reuse compliant. So it tells us which licenses we used and that all six files have copyright and licensing information. And as a small bonus for those people who need it, we have the reuse SPDX command. So this gives us a bill of material. Uh, not really necessary for most, I would say, hobbyist developers, but for lawyers and license compliance officers, this is quite an interesting information. Okay. So switching back. So as you can see that the tool really helps to make this whole process a little bit easier. It's, I mean, in this example, we've seen just uh, six files, but if you have a number of C files in a whole directory, just run the uh, command, the, the tool on all files are there with the asterisk and you will be fine. But of course, check first the information that you actually have. Like if you know that you're only the, co the only copyright holder and licensor, that's easier. But if you have a whole project, do not just run the reuse command or the reuse tool over every single file just saying, well, this should be GPL 3.0 or later, but B 
be sure about this so you don't make an error. But if you know this information, then you can really guarantee that your software project is really simple to reuse for everyone. Okay, so the fourth component, component that got reinvented a little bit, uh, invented a little bit later is the API or the batch. So we didn't want that everyone had to install the reuse helper to, to just see the reuse status of a project. But we wanted to have a continuous check about this. Um, so in this case, um, you can just register your project with our API. It's like reuse as a service, you could say. And this generates a really quick check of your repository, basically running reuse lint on your main branch. And it creates a batch that you can integrate into your readme file, like you see on many uh, Git projects or so. And we will also gonna have a look at how this looks in real life. Switch over. Okay, I think you should see, see it now. So this is ap.reuse.software. Um, to register your project with the API, you, it doesn't really matter right now whether it's already reuse compliant or not. Um, you could go to check my repository here. And all you're gonna have to do is to enter your name, your email address, so we can contact you in case of urgent changes and your project URL. Right now we only support Git projects here, but uh, we are like support for different um, version control systems is in, pi in the pipeline. And yeah, uh, happy to see your contributions if you're interested or your issue requests. But we don't, will not uh, go through the registration here, but have a look at compliant projects. You will see them here. Um, yeah, so we see there are 481, um, repositories that are currently registered to the API. And we just see what the reuse website, for instance, there was a recent change, how this looks like now. So this is the public page for a repository that you registered. And it gives you this pretty bad batch that you can just copy here as markdown. So it will always show the current status and it will always check after every single commit. You even have for developers, you have a JSON file that you can, uh, integrate into your further services. And it gives you basically the, the last lint output that we've already seen. So in this case, the Reels website uses a lot of different licenses and for 76 files. So that's quite simple. Um, of course, the API suits a different need than the tool. Like the tool can be really easily integrated into um, your CI, CD system, for instance. So you can have it also for pull requests um, while the API is more for, for your public face and to show the badge and well, still having a, an alert if something is wrong from the reuse perspective. So now these were the four main components of reuse, but of course we do not stop here. Uh, reuse has been started in 2017 and we are continuously working on it and we have quite big plans. On the tooling side, we want to have more improvements and more automation so that it's even easier to adopt reuse to your own projects. And also for the API, we have a number of ideas and we are really open to collaboration. So if you're interested, please join the community. Um, on the specification end, so the quite formal side of reuse, we in the future want to support more flexibility. So the step five for file format, step five file format now <laughs> um, is a little bit unflexible. There's only one single file. It's hard to parse for tools. Um, so we're thinking about something like a YAML file or JSON file that can be like um, integrate more easily integrated into the project, which is easier for humans to read, but also for machines. And we also want to support a snippet declaration. So it's quite common that for instance, in Stack Overflow, developers uh, copy a snippet, some contribution by someone else and just integrate it into their source code, which is fine, of course, since it's free software. But of course you are asked to also then uh, declare the licensing and copyright of the snippet. And this is right now not possible, but we are working together with the SPDX project uh, on how to make that possible and easy um, to integrate. 
speaking of integration, uh, we want to further integrate reuse in platforms and also with other initiatives. So we want to collaborate here with uh, different source forges so that they are supporting, for instance, the licenses directory, and but also integrate this with other initiatives so that we are not split, going on split ways, but that we are working together on solving all these typical issues that we have with licensing and especially free software licensing. And of course, what I'm doing right now here, spreading the word. So we want to support communities and also companies with adopting the best practices. Because that's important. If the more projects, the more people, the more actors stand behind reuse and make their projects reuse compliant, the easier it is to use and reuse free software and the more ambiguity we erase. So who already uses reuse? So as you've seen, we have almost 500 uh, registered API projects. And then another cool thing is that the majority of the projects of the next generation internet project is already reuse compliant or is in the process of becoming so. So for especially for the US listeners, the next generation internet project is an EU project. So funded by the European Commission. And um, it's a great thing because those projects are all free software, are meant to um, make the internet of the future a little bit more safer, privacy friendly and so on. And all of these projects funded by public money will also be reuse compliant. So that's a great thing. On the, um, I would say community project side, we are quite happy for instance that we have the KDE project there. So they started with the making um, their frameworks. It's basically the fundamentals of the whole KDE project a reuse compliant, and they also integrated reuse in their policies so that all contributors, all developers in KDE are asked to follow the reuse best practices, which we come to the, to the beginning of the, of the talk, also eases, eases the onboarding of developers. So they just have to follow these quite simple best practices. On the company side, we have, we know we are aware that a reuse is part of the policies of, for instance, Siemens, SAP, LifeRay, also of different working groups uh, like uh, Linux Foundation Energy. So we see that the adoption increases quite quickly. Um, also the Linux kernel is partly reuse compliant already. They have a long road and a long history of course and a lot of ambiguity. And uh, yeah, so we are quite happy that I would say roughly 60 to 70% of the Linux kernel are already reuse compliant. Now the question is, are you already an adopter of reuse? If so, it's great. If not, then follow these five steps. So the easiest part, of course, is to sign up the mailing list. So we have a mailing list for reuse, where we, it's quite low, low volume, but where we spread information about the latest releases, but also where we discuss about the next steps. So reuse is a quite collaborative and open project. So we ask for feedback there. You're happy to, um, or invited to share your feedback and also your proposals for the next iterations. Then the next step would be to make one of your projects reuse compliant, actually. As you've seen with the tool and the API, that's quite simple. So just try it out, right? And if you're part of a community, try to integrate reuse into the community. For many projects, there are like these contribution guidelines, or you can just make this project from the start on reuse compliant to really try to, I would say, uh, invest the time, the first time, basically to really clear the information to, to avoid ambiguity inside of the community project. Try to find out the license and copyright holders for all files. And then from this point on, go reuse compliant and keep this level because the later you start, the harder it will be to improve your licensing and copyright information. Then if you're really convinced of reuse, which I hope you do, then you can contribute code to reuse. So all things we have are free software, are open, are accessible. You can uh, create issues there, pull requests. We are really happy to uh, work with you here. And most importantly, help others to adopt reuse. May it be in your company, in your job, in your community, just help them or spread the word about this. That would be really great. And uh, with this, I would like to end this talk. I thank you for your attendance and I'm very much looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Um, 
Hi everyone, this is uh, Stefan. Let me introduce myself quickly. I hope everyone can hear me. I'm the room monitor for this talk. And um, I'm happy to restate the questions that you already put into the IRC channel for the, for the Jupiter room. And please go on, please go on uh, writing questions. And we have about 10 minutes left. So I suggest to go quickly. We have many good questions and I try to blow those up and just start with the first one. So let's just dive into the question. Uh, there was one question, is there any specific handling of Apache 2.0 notice files? So can you say something about that, Max? Um, I'm not sure what you mean with notice files. Um... I oh, know, uh, not not really. No, in this case, not really. Um, I mean, we have many licenses, also like MIT or BSD licenses, that are customized in a sense. And uh, in the FAQ, we have a few suggestions how to deal with those. Uh, you could, in the reuse term, make this a custom license, and uh, treat it as a custom license where you add this information in the license text file, for instance. I'm not, I'm not quite sure whether I, I know what how this works with Apache 2.0, but yeah, this is the whole deal. That could be a way how to integrate this, mm -hmm. especially okay. for MIT and BSD. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you're just saying there are so many licenses out there. That is, that is true. One question in this area was, uh, is the reuse project now supporting all licenses out there, or is it aware of all, or how how do you how do you handle this var var variation? That's a good question. Um, so we integrate the I would say license database of SPDX, which is uh, quite huge. Go on spdx.org/licenses or so. Um, we support these from scratch, um, so we can use these license identifiers. But as I said, you can add custom licenses, and yeah, you can just give them a name like, or name them differently. Like for instance, you have multiple MIT licenses that have different, like that have different templates because perhaps you note that in an MIT license, you could add your name and the year and your email address and have basically a custom license that differs from other MIT licenses. So it's quite simple there to make these custom licenses in the real sense and yeah. so in practice, it supports any license that you have. But of course, I, I should add this, Reus doesn't know, is not aware of license compat compatibility. So you know that there are different licenses that are incompatible. So Reus is not aware of this, especially since we have something like custom licenses. So that's a different step. There are projects out there that try to solve this. Reus cares about the communication of licensing and copyright. and. From then on, other tools and other practices can pick this up. Okay, good. So that is something I have to keep in mind for myself. Um, you talked a lot about uh, SPDX and we have some question about SPDX. Um, so, uh, you know, in, in general, um, stuff like, um, so, um, here was one question. Um, um, most uh, efforts like this, so like like reuse, are controlled by companies and their trade association. So uh, leads to a question: uh, Reuse relies on on SPDX identifiers, which are controlled by Linux Foundation. Um, does it mean is it, is it somehow bound to the Linux Foundation or? controlled or are you are you independent of that and uh, you know there's always you probably know that best there's there's always a high potential of politicalization um, when when you come to those those big foundations like Linux foundation or something else no so reuse is a completely independent project in the sense that it's uh, the FSFE free software Foundation Europe is uh, yeah, the coordinator of the project. So we kickstarted this, but everything that we have is under a free software license and we are in a charity organization like our sister organization in the US. Of course, we rely on different tools and best practices um, like the SPDX project, 
um, but their specification also is free software in a sense. Of course, I, I can see the, the, I would say the, the potential for misuse, but right now we use the specification from them, which is quite great. And we find this important to not reinvent the wheel here. We had this, we saw this initiative there that um, already solved a lot of issues, like having unique identifiers for licenses, for instance, having these tags that are understood by many different other tools and initiatives. So we do not want to split the efforts here. Of course, we, there, depending on how you see it, there might be different sites, but in the end, it suits everyone. If you create free software, it can also be used by companies uh, behind the Linux Foundation, for instance. And that's fine, that's free software. And we use, and also the part that we use uses from SPDX is completely free software. It's an open specification, so uh, I don't see any potential for misuse here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. There's a related question that goes like this. Um, the Linux Foundation has voted identifiers for some licenses that are used in wild. Are you planning to have a, a supplement license list to fill this gap? Mm, I'm, I'm not so aware of, of what, you, what you said about this, but not really. No, we are not in trying to integrate like a, a separate license list for this. As I said, you can, you can add custom licenses that would be a way to do this. Um, other than that, I mean, this is perhaps a more general or brings me to a more general topic. Um, we have been asked so many times about whether we want to integrate more functionality in reuse, like security checks or more meta information. And in the end, we always said no to those things because copyright and licensing itself is already quite complicated. And now we do not want to bloat up this whole thing, but instead make like concentrate on these core issues, copyright and licensing, and concentrate on making those easier also for, I would say, more hobbyist developers who do not have legal staff that they can ask all the time. And so this is still the main goal, and therefore we want to keep it simple and keep it yes. quite slim. Yes. Okay. Um, let me restate a more specific question. Let's say that I work in a project with code licensed under GPL version three and which some text files and images which have some other custom licenses. How can I use reuse in the reuse project for this case? Um, it's, I'm, I'm, did you say other common or uncommon licenses? Mm, I didn't understand. No, that. other like uh, the GPL and which some text file and image file which in some, some other a custom license. A custom license. Well, it's quite simple. Basically, like we did it in the demo with a tool. Um, for the GPL license, it's not an issue. You can just say, well, um, you, you run the add header command on the files that are licensed under GPL. You should decide whether GPL 3 only or 3.0 or later. That should be defined. And um, you can download the license text for this GPL license then. For the custom license, I again refer to the FAQ uh, on reuse.software slash FAQ. There's a section how to add these custom licenses. Um, of course, it's, it's some manual work here. We currently don't have the, like, not the complete tooling for this, uh, but in the end, yeah, for these custom licenses, you can create a custom license text file basically in which you like download the text file for the for this custom license put it into the licenses directory and then apply this custom license to all the files that apply to it so basically for the reuse in in the reuse practice there is no difference between the custom license and something that is on the spdx license list there's also no difference between a proprietary a permissive license or copyleft license reuse treats all licenses the same in this regard to make it easy because we do not want to have different, a different hierarchy of licenses there because that would be even e harder for people. But again, we want to make it uh, fun okay. and easy. Yeah. Okay, Max, can you have a quick word on another specific question? Would the reuse project be willing to maintain a list of important or well-known license that need identifiers that SPDX refuses to list instead of using custom fields? Um, I'm, I'm not so aware of uh, which licenses could be meant by that. Um, mm -hmm. I would say just write me an email and we 
I'm happy to look at what the issue there is and also happy perhaps to collaborate with the SPDX project here that they add okay. this license. I, I think that would be no. the, again, no, no split brain here, but instead of trying to work together, that's, that would be my primary goal. But please, please write me an email for such a specific okay. case. So, so far, no experience on that. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. One, one quick question about tooling. Uh, can the tooling help generation and maintenance of, of DAP5 Debian or copyright files, say converting from to reuse formats? Unfortunately not. Um, that's a little bit also the, the case why we wanted to deprecate the step five format since it's a little bit different from how reuse treats things uh, and wanted to more go into a, an own format. <laughs> Basically, in this case, reinvent the wheel actually for the first time. Um, but no, unfortunately not. But um, if we migrate away from this uh, DEP5 format to the YAML file, there could be some conversion tool anyway, or there has, should be one anyway. So it could well be that we also have a, like a, the, the other way around conversion tool. Could, yes. could work. Okay. Okay. But again, uh, write, write an issue there. I'm, that, that's a good idea. Write a, please write an issue on the repository yeah. and I'm happy to uh, think about how we can integrate this. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Max. Um, we are close to the, the end of the session and I invite you to join the, the IRC. There's a good discussion going on and say be, maybe when you jump in, maybe um, uh, there will be some interesting thoughts. Um, if we have more time, I can, we can maybe talk about another general topic. Uh, what is your experience about source forges and their reaction to the reuse philosophy? How you, how you store the information with the new directory and so on? Um, are there like Trying to say understand it, you know, some some source forgers they look into the files and try to find the license so that it is displayed somehow in the repository. Like what I know from GitHub, for instance, is they just look for the license or copying file and try with a uh, some heuristics try to match this to an actual license. Um, I'm I'm not so much a fan of this, of course, as you might imagine. Unfortunately, the licenses directory by reuse is not yet supported. I just know that they are generally open to this idea, um, but they did not have the time or not the priority yet to integrate this. And they are also not certain how to display potentially multiple licenses there. Uh, for GitLab, I unfortunately don't have a really direct contact. We tried it numerous time to, times to find someone to have it integrated into their um, a, yeah, display of which license is used in the, in the repository. In the end, I, I think the source forge should not try to scroll the repository themselves. Um, I think it, it's completely sufficient if they list which license text files are inside of the uh, repository. Otherwise we have, again, a heuristic there. And I made really bad experiences with heuristics because well, no one can tell you whether it's a GPL 3.0 only license or any later version. Other smaller variants and exceptions to licenses. So here I think this information should be provided by the repository owners, by the maintainers, because they know best and not by the hosters of the, of the source code and not by the reusers. Because in the end, we, otherwise we just do it all over again and we should tackle this whole problem of this ambiguity and this um, uncertainty. We should tackle that at the root and which is the actual project and its maintainers. Okay, good, understood. Um, I didn't get any signal about the end of the session so we can just go on until someone just let us <laughs> know that we are off, off record and um, there's kind of a discussion going on about um, about the IDs, the SPDX IDs, and uh, there is probably a big specification behind SPDX. So, um, how can I find out about uh, what, like the tags, the tags when I have an editable 
file and uh, I put the text in the header and how do I find out uh, what tags are supported and how do I find out what identifiers SPDX present and how, how can I learn about that? For the identifiers, as I said, there's spdx.org slash licenses. No promise, <laughs> SPDX is not my project. Um, but yeah, uh, there's, there's a list of all licenses and all IDs for licenses that are supported by SPDX. Um, regarding the other tags, yeah, the specification by SPDX is quite big. Um, they initially started with an XML format thing. Um, we just basically chose or chose these two tags that were interesting to us, namely the SPDX license identifier and the SPDX file copyright text. And uh, with, yeah, basically there are many other different uh, tags that are available. I think okay. some even for upstream contact or so. Um, Unfortunately, I cannot tell you, please ask yeah. the SPDX project. They're quite friendly guys still. That, that's good and I understood. I also got the signal that we are, uh, we should we should end. So I would ask you to close this session and uh, you are invited to, to join the discussion on the IRC. And I thank you again for uh, the talk and hope to see you later. Yeah, thank Bye. you very much. I, I just joined the uh, discussion. Thank you.